Hey, you two. Hurry up. She's awfully cheerful. In dark times, she must be. She must shine bright. Huh? Now are dark times. Yuna tries hard. We should help her then. If we worry, she tries harder. Do not frown. Don't worry, be happy. Kimari, try too. Smile, let me see. Oh man, Kimari is so awesome. I, I do think he's one of the most underrated characters in, fi in Final Fantasy X. He's seriously amazing. Like I said, he's, his, uh, his development comes in short bursts, but I really do love the way he, start he starts to come out of his shell as the game goes on. So he's gone from never kind of talking to Tylus to having a little scene like that with him. Oh shit, he's resistant to the fire. Damn it. Oh, good old Kimari. He only gets better, seriously. There's no end to Kimari's awesomeness. It's a shame I've never really liked using him on the battlefield. And there you go, the TKO is straight into action there. Seriously, you're going to start to feel like a boss when you start petrifying everything that moves. Now that is one of the, the best things that an NPC is ever going to give you. Stone Proof. So, you've seen Stone Ward, and a ward is a, basically means 50%. So a soft uh, ward would have had a 50% chance of protecting you from petrification, but Stone Proof is 100% effective. So with this, you know it's never going to get petrified. It just won't happen. So that's good news. And there's an Albed Primer around here that I'm hoping I will not miss. It's another one of these ones that's in an awkward place. I'll take you all on! <laughs> okay, let's switch Tylus back in because I think he can get overkills. Because I'm not going to be spending too much time on the battlefield. I want to get as many overkills as possible. And if we can run into any uh, particularly difficult enemies that have a high amount of HP, if they can be taken out by petrification, then that's when Waka will come in extra handy. Okay, I think it should be next to this. The camera kind of changes angle slightly to, to help you find it. those things out of the sky. Let's try and get a few more people to have some turns here. Ouch. As you wish. This is unlikely to work. <laughs> yep, only Waka can do all that thing. Boom. So it's 50%, but it seems to work pretty consistently. No sign of ability spheres. There is a. There we go. You see right there. Very easy to skip it. There's. <laughs> if you notice, they only have one chocobo between the three of them. <laughs> there we go. These are the guys I wanted to run into. So these are the basilisks, and um, they're the most difficult enemies that you're going to face down the Jose Road. 
they have 2025 HP, and they can petrify you. But they're susceptible to darkness. And they have resistance to petrification. Um, let's just get it to have one move here. To be honest, I want to overkill these so I can get extra um, ability spheres. No, I don't think I can. Oh, I can. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. Oof. I think Stone Gaze, again, is a 50% is a thing. And if you notice, I don't have any soft. There's an item called soft, which cures petrification, and I don't have any of those. So that's something that you're going to want to stock up on. But it's a good idea against these guys to keep you in the field. Because you'll always have one person that's not going to get petrified. Actually, hold on, Kimari hasn't had a turn. This is one of these annoying things. If someone gets petrified, you need to make sure they have a turn. Okay, that's better. Okay, there's not going to be an, a significant boss battle for quite a while here, so I'm not going to be too shy about using Ifrit. I guess we didn't shorten the AI sequences. Okay, let's burn these guys up. Lovely. Thank you, Mr. Ifrit. Yay, four ability spheres. That should be good. Okay, now we can mess around with the sphere grid for a bit. Prey is kind of a useless ability. Well, it's not bad at the early levels, but it's not the most important ability you can learn. So as you can see, again, we've got another level 1 lock here that will give a slight boost to, to HP and agility. So considering that we have a fair few level 1 spheres, it's always good to make use of them. Okay, Kimaru's done there. I can bring him down to this section. And then pretty much he's, he's pretty much done. He has a little bit more, but not too much. Okay, that's a pretty useful thing. And I'll explain that in battle, if I ever need to use it. Finally, some strength. Much better. Okay. Yeah, I've already worn out the, <laughs> the ability spheres already. I'm probably going to have to run into another... Basilisk combination. Excellent. Yeah, delay attack is sweet. And a strength boost. Okay, I can come over here and increase um, magic, but honestly, Titus is not going to be using any magic, so. Well, black magic anyway. How are these guys doing? Strength 24 is not all that much, but... Yeah, well. Oh, goody. This time I'll just do it with the characters to speed things up.
Right, what was I going to do? I was going to do this. It only took about three hours for me to remember to do it. So there you go. I look forward to reading the comments. Uh, okay, Kimari's on a long road back down. Yeah, because I don't want to take him to Eunice Grid. That's not going to be a wise move. Okay, let's have a look at weapons. I have to use this. Don't have much choice. Yeah, everyone else should be fine. Yeah. So if you notice the uh, the sword that Waka gave Tidus is still it only has one slot out of four. But after a certain story event then uh, it's gonna reach its full potential, so there's not much you can do about it now, but eventually we'll be able to utilize its full potential. <laughs> there you go. Talk to me. Whoa, hold on. Oh, good guy. Nice one. Okay. This guy gave me something already, right? Whoa, third time. Come on. Again, I think it should be a 50% chance. Okay, good. Stocked up on some ability spheres as well. Yay! Almost at the third temple now. Ah, final encounter. Well, at least it's a different set of enemies. Let's get Lulu in there. So steadily, the, the enemies are starting to increase in HP, but 600 is still Enough. below the amount of damage that Lulu does, so still one hit kills all around. And as you can see, I haven't like done a particularly high amount of leveling, but still one hit kills for now. Hey! How much longer till Xanarkand? Still a ways. First down the moon flow to the Guado city of Guado Salam. Then we cross the Thunder Plains to the temple of Makalania. Oh, boy. <laughs> and before that, we get to pray at the temple in Jose. We can't just skip all that, can we? Huh? Mm -mm. I have to pray to the faith in every temple in order to earn the final Aeon. That's a summoner's training. She's got to prepare mind and body, all just to get ready for the final summoning. Hmm. Must be tough, Yuna. <laughs> I'll be fine with you here. So she doesn't make it obvious, but she gives little kind of tidbits here and there. Oren wants to have a word. Hey, new guy. Me? Who else? What can I do for you, boss? Don't tell Yuna you know about Sin and Jet. Huh? You know her. She would distance herself from you. We do not want that. I see. I think. Yeah, but even if I did say something, no one believed me, you know? Yuna would. Ah, you have a point. Come to think of it, did I really have to know about Jekt? What about my feelings? Better than you finding out at a critical moment, becoming emotional. What? Me? Emotional? <laughs> I heard you were quite the crybaby. Yeah, maybe when I was a kid. <laughs> maybe even a little now. Just a little. Hey! I still don't buy your story, you hear? <laughs> of course you do. Okay. Oh, shit. I ha okay, there's a treasure chest there that I'll come back for eventually. I saw it in the cutscene and forgot about it while I was 
We're running through. See again, mature thinking from Oren to tell him about Jack from the start. Instead of a critical moment, as he said. Whoa. I think there's a scene here. Yuna, it is good to see you and your companions are well. Yourselves as well, Captain. We were worried. Praise be to Yevon. Oh. We escaped with our lives, but our troops were decimated. Of all our chocobos, only this one made it. We make pretty poor chocobo-mounted forces without chocobos. We turned our backs on the teachings and cast away our faith. This, this is our just reward. Yeah, so this is what remains of the chocobo knights, unfortunately. Is that the Jose Temple? Yes, it is. Awesome! The Lightning Mushroom Rock. It only opens when a summoner is addressing the faith. That means another summoner's already in there. Another summoner? What if it's Donna? We have to hurry. Right. In we go. Okay. There should be... I like this music as well. It's very simple, but it has a nice uh, atmosphere to it. Is that Gatter? Yeah, I didn't see him there. Loser, he's. Where is he? I found him, but he was torn in half. I. That idiot. What? What do I do now? I can't do this. I'm going back to Besaid. Oh shit. I think I've only ever triggered that cutscene maybe once before because it does ring a bell, but I have not seen that scene for a long time. Loser, he's. Okay, so actually, I'm. what I'm going to say here is that um, if you remember back in Operation Meehen when uh, Gata was standing at the entrance to the command center, uh, if you talk to him before you tell the guy that you're ready to proceed with the operation, uh, you have a choice of saying two things. And depending on which one you pick, either Luzu dies or Gata dies. So if you really think this guy's annoying and you want to kill the little shit, then you can uh, then you can pick. I think if you tell him to actually stay at the command center, I think uh, then he dies and Luzu survives. But as far as I know, and obviously if you play the game regularly, 99% of the time, uh, Luzu is going to be the one that ends up dying if you're playing it for the first time. So that's why I kept it that way. But if you if you wish, you can change the course of uh, this guy's life and kill him basically. So yeah, uh, you can look that one up if you really want more specific details, but yeah, you do have the option to kill him if you want. I've been thinking about the future. Yeah, we're gonna see about his future at some point. I really do feel sorry for Clasco. He's an awesome guy, but he just uh, he has a tough time. Okay. Oh, sh that's Luzu. Okay, that I have never seen before. Holy moly! Damn! I did not know about that. I have never seen that before. Wow. So that's the kind of game this is. I mean, you could play through it. 10 times, 15 times, and still find something new. Auron is the only one that doesn't really have 
a weapon that does something more than the original, so I'm just going to give him that. Damn. Poor Luzu. Okay, let's head in to temple number three. And as you can see, there's a lot of lightning around. So the last temple was Temple of Fire. This one has lightning, so I'm sure you can start. I'm sure you can put two and two together and guess what we're, what kind of aeon we're going to get in this place. And let's meet the other summoner as well. Talk to me. So you're a champion of Yevon now, Braska? <laughs> yep, his old buddy statue is up there. I beg your pardon, but may I ask your name? I am Summoner Yuna, from the Isle of Besaid. As I thought. The daughter of Lord Braska. You have the look of your father. My father? You knew him? No. I have never met the man. Ah, my apologies. I am Isaru. I am a summoner, like you. I'm Pase. Pleased to meet you. And I'm Moroda. I'm guarding my big brother here. Since I was a child, I've always looked up to Lord Braska. I wished I would someday become a high summoner like he was. You must have some of your father's talent in you. I believe you might someday defeat Sin. I... I'm not really. I've only just become a summoner. Of course, I've no intention of losing either. So perhaps we should race to see who can defeat Sin first, no? Oh, very well then. I accept your challenge. Isaru! Yuna, I beg your leave. Good luck to both of us. Yes. Okay, so after meeting someone like Donna, <laughs> we've, we've seemed to get a summoner who kind of looks and acts a bit more like a summoner should. I do love the camera shot where he says I've always looked up to Lord Braska and you can see the kind of you can see Braska behind him. There we go. Oh boy. It's interesting that uh Passe is also joining them, you know, for a I'm not. I'm not sure if, I, let's say, I wanted to be a summoner. I'd, I'm not sure I would take my kid brother along with me because, as you can see, it's pretty dangerous. It's another chest. Okay. What are these two doing? Okay. So we're just going to run around in circles. I guess you're trying to keep the kid entertained amongst all of the tragedy around them. Okay, I'm not going to head into... Actually, wait, I think I need to trigger a cutscene first. Hey, you. Me? You are Yuna's guardian, no? Moroda's heard a curious rumor. I thought you should know. I heard it from those crusaders. Seems that summoners have been going out on pilgrimage and just disappearing. It could just be the fiends got them, but not so many so quickly. Sorry I don't know more, but watch your back. Ain't much future for a guardian without a summoner, eh? What? What? What you all talking about? We're talking about doing your job as a guardian. Hey. I'm doing good. Right, big brother? Please be careful. Will do. Passe! Oh, what? We're leaving! Be right there! See ya! <laughs> oh, I do like that trio. They're a good bunch. 
Okay, it's been a fairly long recording session. I'm going to end it here today. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to record tomorrow, but at the end of the day, it's a long series. I don't think anyone's expecting me to finish within like the next few days or the next week or anything. This will take a long time. So, yeah, if you've been enjoying the series so far, thank you. Keep your lights, your lights, keep your likes and your comments rolling in. I look, uh, I enjoy reading them. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll continue from where we left off in the coming days. Thanks for watching.